So this little piece that will be too small to be grabbed, I'm gonna do a three hole signature. Of course, I could do two, uh, five, I mean, but with that amount of paper, doing five will be a challenge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue those smaller pieces to the bigger paper, just to make sure they hold at their place and I don't have to fight with them. So I'm going to use my art glitter glue, just adding a tiny line. In this case here, my fold, I'm going to do my fold correctly. And I'll just put a tiny line just in the middle. So I'm going to use just one page by one put it at the good spot and nobody will know and it will open well because it's just a tiny line so you might, might want to make sure you can open it before it dries out completely and there you go I should do the same for those two here. So this one should be grabbed with the signature, but this one will be a challenge too. So I'm gonna put a tiny line. And I'll just make sure it goes here, let's say. There we go. And even I can do that for gluing it down with the tracing paper, especially if you have a big a really big uh, signature. I can move it up like that. Like this one is lower to the page. I can move this one higher. This one will be lower just to have some diversity. So in order to do that, I make sure that my folds are really clear and Here you go. Just like that. So I'm going to go through the journal like that. This one is edgy, so I think we should glue it down. Although, yeah, it's going to be really, really edgy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue it here. On that side, it's going to be more of a tuck spot. So if we want to open this page, I'm going to create the fold right away. But for this one, it's going to be opening like that on that fold, just to make sure it holds well. Same again here. What I can do too, instead of gluing it like that, if I want to fully open it because here there's line to write, I'm going to use a washi tape. This is a tape that I received, a washi tape that I received from my creative studio, the box that you can, you can buy a subscription 
this this is part of one of the box there you go so this they will hold together and i can still open them so what i want to do now is put three ruffles or five ruffles of lace or fabric and i can put paper ruffle too I gathered together like my stash of fabric ruffles. I have a video on how to do those with the sewing machine. If you're not familiar, I'll put the link in the description below if you missed that one. Now I have this lace. What I love about this lace is that I can create a ruffle directly on the page it's kind of soft, really, really thin. So I'm going to do that. And I have this one that I really love. Just to glue like that. And it hangs on the side. So it's one of my favorite to do that. Um, so I'm going to go with two full lines of laces like that. And then smaller pieces here and there. So at the end, I should have like five. So let's start with this one i'm gonna figure out where i want it so if i place my journal because we want to see the flowers i think it should be best at the beginning so maybe this this one would be just perfect for that so i won't overthink the process and i'll just go I don't want to cut the flower, so I'll cut it this way and it's going to be a little bit longer than the book page. And in order to glue that, any glue would work. I tend to not put any glue on the flowers because they're going to hang out. So my glue will be following those lines and not completely. I'll leave a, an empty space at the end because I know... It's not going to the end so I'll just come here and I'll just do these line and then I can come back and add more glue at specific spots if I find that it's not holding well or it's too loose something like that All right, and I'm going to follow the edge. A little bit like that. What about that? Oh, I put too much glue. If you erase it right away, it won't create any damages. <laughs> I'm guessing I'll have enough glue. So if I manipulate that, it seems like it's not too loose and it's perfect. All right, the first one is done. And if I take my cover just for fun, at this point, I regularly check with the cover. Look at that. Now I'm going to decide which other page will have the full length of that. So I can look on the side. I want it to be on the other side of the signature and maybe a long strip like this could be cool or this one. I'll use this one. This one is a little bit more. I think it's a 24 pounds and this one is a 20 pounds. So I'll, I'll use this one. So in order to do that, I'm going to remove my paper, put this one on the other. I'm going to create some folds while I'm sewing. So I need bigger than just this length. So I'll go at least one time and a half or even double the double the length of the lace let's see what i've done i've done double now if you are following me since a while you know that i don't love the edges 
the of the laces and that's what I love about this one is that I can cut the edge and it's still a big lace in the middle so I'll just remove all my edges before going to the sewing machine and I did a tutorial for sewing the the ruffles using papers and these are easy because you can just glue them to your page so if you did your signature and you didn't um, you forgot to sew something you can do this trick so in this case I'm gonna sew it the same way I did for in this tutorial but directly on a page and I'll do it on camera quickly but if you need more details um, just find my tutorial I have a sewing playlist uh, that might be helpful there's only that video for now but with time I'm gonna build up a, a little playlist that should be interesting for those who start sewing okay so let me go to my sewing machine so my sewing machine it is tread with black uh, because I did all the um, I was sewing with black on the cover so I'll keep that I'm gonna add some black here and there in this journal the black tread with soft color I just find they, they kind of go well together so first you start with creating a fold and and then just do a little tack it's a back and forth then I'm using my scissors you can use any kind of tool you just want something really thin so if you have those kind of scissors they're really helpful and I find that my grip is it goes really well so I'm going to create some folds while I'm sewing and I'm going to play with moving it to the left, moving it to the right, sometimes straight, sometimes a little bit more wavy than other times. And I'm just moving, I just go slowly like that. What you don't want is that your lace looks straight. And then at the end, you just do a back and forth again. This is an old machine. I don't have the little button that does the da -da -da -da, so I need to do it manually. There you go. Look at that. This is what it looks like at the end. So I just need to trim the excess of my lace. And it's not a waste, as you know. I'm going to use it in other projects. Back to my table. You can have a bigger view of that. And honestly, I love the black tread on the other side. I didn't think about it when I, when I did that. But it looks good. So I'm placing back my page into my journal. So now if we look at the overall look, it looks like that we added this one now I can go with smaller pieces this looks awesome so why not using it so let's go here and I'll just look like that so this one this one looks like it could be a good candidate so I'll just look to see if I put it in the middle a little high do you want it here, here, I, I think I'm, I'm going to go like this. So how it works, because you have already a paper or a tracing paper, I just put it aside. And then I apply some glue directly on my paper. About half an inch or one centimeter large and then I'm gonna be able to glue glue it down and I can let it go out the paper for the length I want I don't want it to be too too far because 
it's one of the middle paper and I don't want it to be too much outside the papers. It's already one of the largest paper in the middle. But look at that. This looks great. Now, let me see. I want to put other kinds. So maybe this one, white and pink, that fits. So I'm looking on the side and I, I just try to figure out where where it would look great so this one could be maybe lower part like that somewhere so it can be it can even be here this one was really really large so yeah i think this is what i'm gonna do on this pocket so i'm gonna put it beside and do the same thing. Some glue there. And I'll just glue this little portion here to control where it falls. There you go. Look at that. Oh, I think it's gonna be awesome. All right, so now we have this on one side and this on the other side. We don't really see that much. The last one I've put from the top, but if we look on the side, we see it. So I can add one more and I just find it's missing one maybe somewhere at the beginning here. So let's see where I can add one. Maybe this page would be great. Let's see if I grab, yeah, the colors are, they do fit well. So I'm gonna go this way or maybe just in the middle, just like that. And again, I don't overthink the process. It's, it always end up really cute and Otherwise, I can always remove something or add more to modify if I'm really, really not satisfied. Here we go. We have laces and fabric ruffles. Really cute. Really cute. I'm thinking maybe I should add something here cover the last part. Maybe I should do something on both sides here, on both sides of this cover. Maybe I should add a little lace. Just like that. Is it better? Yeah. It's now time to attach the signature to the journal. So I'll just make sure that my cover is the same side. Like if I have some scripting that they're the the good uh, the good side and then I'll just review quickly we glued the little pieces but I'll just make sure that my pieces that needs to be attached with the threads are aligned correctly like this one it's a little bit too much at the edge so I can put it either low like that or higher like that I tend to prefer Putting them more low than I, I don't know why, but 
and I'm going to do my first hole about an inch from the bottom and from the higher side. So it needs to be grabbed within one inch. So I'm just reviewing everything. Like this one here, it's a bit too much on the edge. So I'll just move it higher a little bit doesn't need to be too much but so I'm just reviewing all those pages like that so this I'm gonna move it like this and like this this one maybe a little bit lower this one is glued yeah It's a good way to review at the same time if you have any, any papers that are on the wrong side, like by mistake, they are upside down. This is glued. This should be grabbed like that. This is all glued to the paper, so I'm good. like that okay so it's all good now I'm gonna place my page correctly and this is where you need a big book like a big dictionary oh look at that there's something drying there a little house <laughs> when I want my uh, papers to be really flat I glue them and I place them there for like half a day or a night and it seems like I forget some there sometime, from time to time. All right, so I'm gonna place my papers, like I have this um, tracing paper that seems to be not aligned exactly. Oops. Okay, I'll just make sure that my edges are kind of aligned. And I'm placing my signature in the big crease of the dictionary because this is how we're going to sew the signature. So now I need to find the middle and I need to, because it's a big signature, when I'm using just six or eight papers, I don't mind that much. But when there's a lot of pieces like that, I'm going to use those big paper clips. I'm holding my signature almost closed like just what i need for my fingers and to be able to separate both sides they need to be to be in the crease like that because you can see how the papers are all aligned and with my fingers i'm applying some sort of a pressure to hold them down while i'm clipping one side and i'm gonna clip the other side so now you're going to verify that they are pretty much all aligned and we're going to do the other side same thing we put pressure there we hold it you can verify if it looks okay before clipping and i'm going to clip the papers this is to help that all the, the holes that we're going to create to pass the thread through will be really in the crease of the paper. And we want to clip the papers together to make sure they're not moving while we are doing the stitching. So I'm going to close those clips so they are not in my ends. Don't forget to look at the side. To make sure you place it the correct way in your cover now i'm going to do the same thing with my cover adding the cover placing it where i want it to make sure it's in the middle especially this one because i have fabric in the middle so i'll just 
align that in the middle manually and put in the crease. This I'm ready to go to punch. So I'm gonna use a awl and I'm eyeballing, but you can measure. I start with the middle. So to me, if it looks in the middle, well, that will look in the middle at the end. So I'm doing a hole in the middle and then about an inch from the sides to make sure I grab everything. We don't need to be really close to the edge. I'm keeping the all into the last hole that could be the higher hole or the lower one, doesn't matter. But this, I'm going to keep it there just because it's going to be useful. Now you're going to use those wax thread, ideally, especially for a big signature like that, where the embroidery threads are, are getting loose or it's hard to tighten them. So if you buy wax thread, <coughs> so if you buy wax thread, they are not round, they are flat wax thread. So we can see here it's flat. The round one doesn't hold. So you can buy a box like that, not the box, but a pack, a bundle on Amazon that where you have all the colors, shades of of brown, or grayish, black, all the shades, and you have a white one too. Or you can buy them individually. So I'll put the link in the description below so you can have access to that on Amazon. This is where I bought those. Um, but you're looking for a flat wax thread that is seven millimeters. If it's bigger than that, because the seven millimeters, it's the size of, I'm not so sure what, but, but it's the size you're looking for, seven millimeters. And I'll put the link in the description below. For me, I remember it was a little challenge when I started where to find the supply and which one are the good one and what I need to look for, what are the, what is the description of the product that I'm looking for. So by giving you an example, you don't need to buy that one. It's just like you follow the link, you look at what it is, and then you can see if you have something similar, maybe at a better price. So now we're going to measure that thread because we don't want to eyeball just a thread dimension. We can run out of thread or we, we will have too much and we will and we cannot really reuse the leftovers anyway. So if you want the threads to hang out and put some little beads, the measurement is three times the book. So the journal. So one, two, and three. And then I cut like just above, maybe an inch more, but you don't need to, to give like more than that because this this is already sufficient you're going to use a needle where the hole is big enough so you can pass the thread but you don't want a big big hole a big big needle there because it's going to be more bulky to pass through your journal so you want something that you can pass the thread there but that is not over oversized not too big and I use a tapestry needle where it's not that pointy but I've been using regular needles too I just find that if I'm just beside the hole it 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 doesn't scratch my paper as much like it forgives a little bit more I remove the dictionary. We see we have the three holes there and we have the three holes in the signature. So first I'm gonna start with the middle and in order to help you just close your signature and just pull. If you have a hard time to pull, I'm using, I'm using tools. And now the thread, I can leave it hanging out there. 
And now we're gonna pass through the cover. So the middle is done. Just make sure you're not you're not losing that end. Now we're gonna go back inside from the hole and when there's fabric or lace, I find it harder. So this is where the punch can be endy. I, I will put the needle, the punch, the awl inside my hole. So I have an idea here where it comes and I'm gonna just follow the, the awl well while I'm removing it to go back in. All right, and then here it's easy. You keep it almost closed, and technically you can go back as easily as that because they, they, they are all together. They didn't move because of the paper clips. I'm going to pull. Now to get out again, same thing. That should be easy if you fold your signature the more that you can and you can place your needle then you fold and you go through and then I'm gonna pass through the cover again and now I need to come back so I need to come back in the same hole but not through the tread the other tread so I'm going to go through just for the cover first. And this is why you love to have the signature. I think I am through. Yeah. Okay. If you are, if you pass through, you can just remove the needle, figure out where. Let me close. Let me do a close up. I remove the needle because this will happen to you from time to time and I'll just find see it was inside so with my needle I'll just remove it but it's still already passed through and you'll see if you're passing through the other tread because you cannot pull like they are kind of together and they don't move the the tread doesn't move easily So I'm going to put it back in my needle and go back in and the same thing would would apply. I'm going to try to go through keeping the book, the journal closed so it went through easily and it's right in the middle. If it would not be here, I could try another time. But usually, if you did a good job with the clipping, you're really good to go. It's as easy as that to, to do your signature, even if you have lots of papers like that. So I've been using, oops, I'm going to zoom out. Okay, back to the normal zoom. So I've been using my tools to get out. And now I'm going to figured out which one I can pull on. Remove the needle. So my tread is, they're both inside. I've completed the tread. Now we want to remove the paper clips before, before uh, doing the knots because we want to make sure that the tension is good and we don't want the papers to be attached one together because if there was any gap between the papers now they're gonna they're gonna have the good tension so i'm gonna place the book the journal correctly now you want a tread on each side of the middle line and you want to pull so you're pulling on both side and we could see that they they adjusted. Now we want to make sure if we look at that, if it looks okay, and we want to make sure that the tension is good here. 
uh, there's not a gap. It looks all good. Here I can put, pull the tension more. It seems all good. So I'm gonna do a double knot. One knot and the other one. And the wax, you can see how easy it is to do my knots because when I do the first knot, I'm pulling and it the wax locks the knot. We still do two knots, but even between the two knots, the tension remains there. And I have this leftover, see from my measurement, for my beads, which is quite enough. Now we can put the beads there. I did one outside, out of the camera. So this is how it works. You need, the best is to use a crimp on both sides and then some beads inside the cramps. So most of the time I use two small and a bigger one. And then on the other one, just to be different, I'm gonna use a, a medium size and a bigger one. So I've already put the crimp there. So I'm gonna go with one that is a little bit bigger. I'll use a different color. Your challenge at that level is to have beads where the hole is big enough because those um, those threads are not so small. The good news is that with the wax, you can really like put it back together. Sometimes I, I twist a little bit uh, the thread and if my end is too damaged, I I cut a little bit, so I'm going to try. And then when you're in the hole, you, you kind of pull while you twist. I didn't do it correctly. My bead is, this bead is really limit. I'm going to trim with an angle. I don't know if you see. Let me zoom. I gave it a little angle so it can start with the pointy one and I'm twisting either the thread or my bead while I while I try to to push it inside the hole. Now I can see that some of the threads are not going, but if I keep going on like that, they might end up being okay. Sometimes I try to push with my needle. It's coming. And as soon as I can, I'm going to use the pliers to, to pull or my fingers. My fingers were better. All right. This one was a challenge. So I'm going to trim the edge. And that's why you want it to be a little bit longer. Sometimes you need to kind of cut it. So this one, the hole is bigger and look how easy it was. First shot. We want one to be lower than the other one. We want a little difference. So either I finish it there or I can add a third one there. I'm going to finish it there because this one has three. So... I love to have different, like, I love to have two and three. So I'm going to put my crimp. And again, my favorite way is to use my pliers instead of my fingers. 
so I see better and then go in. So again, my crimps are a bit too small. Um, I'm going to find, I don't remember, I'm going to go see which size they were. There's a number for the size of the hole. And I'm going to put a link in the description below of the size you should get for a 7 millimeter thread, wax thread. So if you have to buy some because you're a beginner, you would buy the correct size, not like me. Because now that I have this big amount of crimps, I kind of want to use them, but they're not funny. So to help myself, I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to cut with an angle and I'm going to start with the point, the pointy side. It helps, as you can see. All right, so now I'm going to bring this all down. I'm going to place it where I'd like to have them. So this one will be the shortest one and this one should be a little bit longer like that about for my own taste and I'm going to with the pliers I'm going to crimp the lowest one first now that this one is crimped I'm going to bring the beads and the DIS crimp with a pressure so there's no gap and then I'm going to crimp the IO one. Here you go. So they hold well, and now I'm gonna trim the edge and I just make it a little bit fluffy so it doesn't look so much that I've cut it. And that's it, we have the beads. I love the, the special touch that it gives to the journals when we add some beads. It can be a charm. Here we go. So we have the beads. We have the thread showing on the side. And if we open the journal, we have plenty of place to add more because we had like a large spine here so because it's all soft and it's fabric um, we can see that it's not too chunky even if it looks like it's chunky so we would need some sort of a ribbon here to hold it all together at the end but right now that's it we have lots of lace here and it's all chunky we have lace but here it looks really flat to me so i'm going to create a tassel but it's going to be on a different video like a tutorial only for tassels thanks for watching and uh, see you in that next video for the tassel next week bye bye god bless you